What's going on, Sooner Nation? Oklahoma, they're sitting in a really good spot for multiple top prospects across the country here in the 2025 class. And you might have saw Oklahoma get a prediction for a five-star offensive lineman, but you might have seen one potentially be trending away. Today, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on what I think about both of those recruitments and technically where Oklahoma stands in this class. Because... Although there's predictions going in for these players to other schools or to Oklahoma, things might not be always as they seem. But before we dive into it, guys, I need to hear from y'all. So make sure you're joining the discussion, jumping down in the comments below and giving me your thoughts. Let me know if you think Michael Fasusi ends up going to Texas or if you think Ty Haywood ends up at Oklahoma. Additionally, if you have not already, you need to hit that like and you need to hit the subscribe button because I'm trying to get the 10,000 subscribers and it's been a slow couple months, right? Off-season content, we get it. Want you guys to be a part of it though. We got softball coming up later today as well. So make sure you guys are tuning in. But thank you guys for tuning into the PG show where we talk about all things Oklahoma athletics. And today we got to talk about the Michael Fasusi prediction where Oklahoma where you've heard from me and you've heard from several other people saying, hey, I think Michael Fasusi is trending towards Oklahoma. And I think that's still a good pick. And I think it's the right pick. But a lot of people saw this prediction come in after Oklahoma got a prediction in favor of Ty Haywood. And you kind of ask yourselves, well, what's going on? Because Michael Fasusi has been one of those prospects that, a lot of Oklahoma folks, and if you talk to people around the program, they feel really strong in this five-star prospect. And Oklahoma has a very good reason to feel strong, right? You've gotten like four or five, it might be closer to six, but it's like four or five unofficial visits. And, I mean, you've got one of his former teammates in Jaden Hardy currently on the team. If you're Oklahoma, it's not like you're battling the uh, road test of, hey, I'm not that close to home, right? I'm not Oregon being 1,000, 1,200 miles away. Like, I'm, I'm Oklahoma. I'm just right up the road. I mean, Louisville, Texas, I think it's, I think it's like close to just right at about three hours from Norman. So when you look at this and you say, okay, I don't think this is anything right now that we need to be freaking out about. Michael Fasusi, prediction to Texas, I'm not putting a lot of stock in. He's going to take all of his official visits. He's going to see what these programs have to offer him as a five-star offensive lineman because, yeah, like he knows he can go to Texas and get developed. He knows he can go to Oklahoma or Oregon or Alabama and get developed. At this point, it's a, what can you offer me outside of development, right? You know, when, when you get to this point and you're this lead of a prospect uh, and the list of schools you have that you could potentially go to, A&M, LSU, like you're not going to have an issue there getting to the NFL, right? It's what do you have? outside of football how do you prepare me for life outside of football so i look at michael fasusi and in my opinion not putting a lot of stock into that prediction he's going to take more visits he's going to be back at oklahoma in the spring he's going to be going to colorado which phil Lodeholt is out there and that's one where i think hey you know what maybe you got to watch and see how that visit's going to go obviously missouri did a really good job on their visit too so uh, listen Nothing right now that I think a lot of people need to be 100% worried and focused on. But you did get a prediction in favor of Oklahoma for Ty Haywood. And again, I, I, although this one's in favor of Oklahoma, I'm not going to change my tune and say, hey, you need to put a bunch of stock into this, right? Again, take this very lightly. The reason why I say that is, is because he's a five-star offensive lineman, guys. We know these recruitments are not this easy to win, right? Like, yeah, it's great. You're getting predictions and people are favoring you. Like people are putting their ass on the line saying, hey, I think Oklahoma is the favorite here, but I'm not going to say that Oklahoma is going to win this commitment right now. Like, yes, they're in a good spot. You have seen a lot of people talk really good about where Oklahoma sits with Ty Haywood. But we need to see this guy get back on campus. We need to see him schedule an official visit. And then, I mean, 
the final goal would be to see him get publicly committed to Oklahoma. That ain't happened yet. So I know Oklahoma fans are going to want to take the Ty Haywood prediction. You're going to want to run with it. It's a Texas guy, right? And you heard so many people talk about it with Jonah Williams. And hey, sometimes those predictions aren't really where they think they're going to go. They could be there to just stir up some drama, right? Again, Ty Haywood might have all intentions of going to Oklahoma. I'm just saying, I think Oklahoma, don't get your hopes up. Don't pump the brakes a little bit. That's all I'm saying. Pump the brakes, slow down, feel it out. Let's see how things roll over the next couple of months. Because if you're Bill Beanbow, you've already got two offensive linemen committed in this class and Ryan Foje and Owen Holland back. So you've got time. Like you don't like you have room to kind of like figure things out and not have to push super hard. Like, you know, continue to work on those relationships, build them, get them back on campus a couple more times, sell them that Oklahoma is the best place. Like you're not trying to quickly scramble and get everything together to get this guy on campus because you don't have any offensive linemen committed. That, that's kind of how I feel. Right. And then you look at just some of the other people for this class for Oklahoma. You've seen predictions flow in for Cole Bryler, which if you guys watched the last video and we talked about, uh, Potential guys who we could see commit to Oklahoma next, like Cole Bryler was on that list. Uh, you guys have seen uh, Bucard end up scheduling an official visit with Oklahoma. You've seen Landon Rink. Like I think there's a chance you see probably two commitments in the in in the, in the in the spring or maybe around the spring game time. You got Malik Hawkins coming up, so there is some exciting things for Oklahoma coming down the on the recruiting trail. But when it comes to these five star offensive linemen, I just want people to kind of reserve a little bit like we've seen the five-star recruitments not go Oklahoma's way and I don't want to be the guy that's going to sit here and sunshine pump with you and tell you Oklahoma's winning three of these five-star offensive linemen because I did that with you guys with the defensive linemen last year which yes Oklahoma was probably going to get two of those at the time I said that things just don't always go your way and I'm, and I'm telling you now like where I thought Oklahoma a month or so ago was like a clear-cut leader for Michael Fasusi. I don't think that anymore. Like, I think they still have a lead, but I think that lead has diminished a little bit. Now, I, I was talking to Jay over at Unfair Sports about it today. I think Oklahoma probably regains some of that momentum when you go get that spring visit from Fasusi. And, a and at that time, he will have already been to A&M and to LSU, and I think... I think he will have already been to Oregon at that time, too. So I think he'll just have Colorado and Missouri after that. So you have some time to regain some momentum there, get everything going back on the recruiting trail. And if you're Oklahoma, you're trying to wrap this class up strong. And if you're Bill Beatenbow and you just land two of these guys on the offensive line, you don't have to land a Lamont Rogers and Andrew Baboloa as well. Although it'd be really nice to land one of those guys. If you just land these two with what you already have, this is not only the best class you've landed in terms of offensive linemen as a Bill Beatenbow, but this might be one of the best offensive line classes in Oklahoma football history. So let's take our time. Don't give your hopes up, guys. But just know, hey, Oklahoma might sit in a good spot for a couple of these guys. I don't believe that Michael Fasusi is trending away. Don't put a whole lot of stock into that prediction. Uh, Ty Haywood. Listen, do what you want with it. Um, I want to wait a little bit longer and kind of see how things play out, but that's just me. So uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like, you hit the subscribe button, uh, join the discussion, jump down in the comments below, give me your thoughts. Do you agree with me? And YouTube wants you guys to watch one of these videos. So make sure you tune in there and also tune in later for softball episode. So see you later.